Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Code Emporium where we are going to talk about some SQL. Now, SQL is something you use in your day-to-day job as a data scientist. And from my experience for the past two years as being a full-time data scientist, I want to show you the kind of SQL that we actually use and how it's really different from all the theoretical stuff that you would potentially learn in school too. A lot of the SQL that we use is definitely overlapping with a traditional education system, but I just wanted to make sure that you all know exactly how we use SQL in the industry. And so if you want to know that, this is the video for you. I wanted to make this video a little different too, where we're going to be looking at a data set and I'm going to be giving you a few like actual questions that you would potentially be solving with SQL, where you could just take a pen or paper and also like maybe open a notebook or something like that and just type away the SQL answers to this. I'll give you some like five seconds to do it where you can just pause the video and then after that we can look at the solutions together so that we cover all of our bases from like select statements to joins to where clauses to even more advanced concepts like windowing functions. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a couple of applications, mostly from like previous videos of like how all of these concepts would tie in together to actually, you know, how we would actually use SQL in creating, let's say a machine learning data set or just in machine learning in general. And with that, let's get started. All right, so first right here, we have this huge monster of uh, general syntax of a SQL statement that I wanted to type out. I did this because a select statement is literally what you'll be doing for 99% of your querying in SQL. And this entire syntax kind of has about everything that you'll even need from selects with a from, and you'll have a couple of joins, where clauses, dealing with aggregations with group by and having, and then we have like an order by to order your data and then limit to get a number of specified rows. So this is kind of the gist of all you need to know, but we're gonna take a data set and actually work with some problems because this is a little hard to look at. So first of all, I have the CSV of some Indian takeout food and uh, they have like information here that I'm gonna scroll down to where each row kind of looks like this. So it's an order, technically each row corresponds to an order, but it's, an, it's more like a product for every order. So you'll see that one order will span multiple rows with you know how many of each item we're getting, the price of the items and whatnot, right? And I am just doing some pandas manipulation right here just to get that data out and up to us and also like creating this extra date field so that it's so that the data is in a particular format that's just easy to work with now um i'm kind of like modifying date for for you know tips here i'm just kind of modifying this date to look like um you know uh, the year followed by the month followed by the date because in sql you can kind of treat the date as a string and when strings are ordered and if you sort the strings this will actually sort the strings by date so 2017 0423 will actually come before even uh 2019 0421 even as a string and not just like in a typical time series date format just a little tidbit and letting you know so this is kind of one of the tables that we have and another table that we have in our data set is like an item table and a price. So this is definitely the price of an individual item, whereas this price, I actually do not know what it is. And what we could do is kind of use SQL to figure it out. So if this is the orders table and this is the products table, let's jump to our first question of can we verify if the orders.price, that is this one over here, represents the item price itself, or if it represents the item times the quantity price. So there are situations where this quantity is two and the price is given. So does this price represent the price of this entire row? Like two quantities of plain rice, for example, if it was there, or would it just be one, no matter what this quantity value is? How can we do that? by joining this product orders table to this products table. So just take out a piece of paper or just open a tab in your notebook and try to write a SQL query for this. In the meantime though, enjoy my pointless banter. Have you liked this video? Please like. Have you subscribed to my channel? Please subscribe. I hope that was enough time for you to write down a SQL query and right now we shall go through some results. 
So first of all, I'm taking the orders table and doing a join on the products table by saying that the products item field is equal to the order item field. So this is a typical, just a typical join condition right here. And in that case, I also use um, kind of this as function, which is basically used for aliasing and products.price is now called product underscore price, which you see appended to this table here. And so what we can see is that the orders are actually the same. And I, I think that if I were to even just refresh all of these columns and just do some sampling, let's try to do some sampling and see what happens here. So you can see that the plain popperdom is we have four of them here where the price in the orders table is 80 cents whereas the price here in the products is also 80 cents which means that the order dot price actually represents just the price of a single item that's good information to know when you're kind of digging around your data set because a lot of the time you know you don't have um you you just don't know there's no like description of some of these fields so you might have to like figure it out yourself a little bit but it's good to know very simple query right you still with us? Great. Now let's go to select and wear clauses. Which items cost more than $10? Now I'm going to try to try to write a query for this. I'll give you some time. And in the end, let me just actually give you the, let me, let me scroll up right here. Yeah. So that you can see kind of the table that we're dealing with right now. In the meantime, have you joined our discord server? because it's poppin', it's really cool, and I think it would be an even better place if you joined. Yeah, all right, so I hope you all have written that query out, and we are now going to check it out. So we want distinct items from just the product, from just the products table, where we want to see if the price is greater than $10, which is probably the easiest way to do it. You can also do it from the orders table too, but like, the products table is definitely more simplified and just easier to work with in this case. And so I've just displayed like the top 10 products in terms of pricing. And so that is lamb tikka biryani, chicken tikka balti, lamb tikka balti, prawn balti, paneer tikka balti, chicken tikka biryani, Persian lamb biryani, prawn balti, Persian chicken biryani, lamb Persian, and the list will go on. All right. Now you know how selects and wares work and also the joins, let's take it up a notch and deal with aggregations of data. Where we're going to be doing like the sum of values or the count of values or the max or min of certain groups of values. So let's try this question now. How many orders were placed daily in 2019? So in this case, I'm looking for more of a, a time series chart where every day I just want to aggregate and count the number of orders that occurred. So how do we do this? Don't worry, I'll give you some time. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. Because right now, let's get into it. So we have the select statement again, and this time, well, we have a date that's kind of given in, um, well, I've already kind of, uh, it, it was technically in a timestamp format with like hours, minutes, and seconds, but I just wanted to convert it into a proper date format. And hence, I'm just casting it as date here. And then after that, we are going to count the total number of distinct order numbers that exist right? And we're doing this per group. And the grouping here is every date. So every date, we are going to count the number of orders, the distinct number of orders that occur, where, of course, the date is in 2019 only. So because like we're dealing with these dates as strings now, it actually kind of makes sense that we transformed it into this year hyphen month hyphen day, because even in a string format, we could compare dates. And that's how we would do aggregations here. And if we were to plot this out in a chart over here, it would look something like this. It looks really beautiful, looks really neat and tidy. And this is, I guess, kind of like how you would kind of structure your data, even in a time series problem, for example, if you were dealing with it. Foreshadowing of what's to come. Now, apart from this and aggregations, we 
Also use something called case statements, which are used for uh, conditionals, kind of like if, else, or if, and then uh, st situations. So let's say right now, I want to add another column where we are going to categorize data based on sales. So if every date will compute the sales, right? And if the sale date has over 30 sales, then we'll say it's a high yield day. Otherwise, if it's between 10 and 30, it's a medium yield day. And other than that, if it's lower than 10, it's a low yield day. So can you add an extra column to reflect this categorization with SQL? I'll give you a minute. Wow, one minute passed so fast. That's so cool. Wow, time just flies when you're having SQL fun. So first of all, this is also introduces the concept of nested queries, where I'm literally copying the query that we took before to get the daily order counts and I'm calling it T. This is essentially an alias in SQL. And then from this table T, we are going to get the date, the total number of orders, and then we're gonna also add our categorization. So when the number of orders is greater than 30, it's high. If it's less than 10, it's low. Otherwise, it's a medium yield day. And when you execute this query, you get this results where 22 is definitely between 10 and 30, it's medium. Nine less than 10 is low. So it works out pretty well. I hope you're keeping up and I hope this is fun. Now, next is probably one of the most important concepts that is not taught in traditional education, but we use all the time at, in like actual work in the industry. And it's common table expressions, which is basically a better way to manage your queries. And essentially, like if we took this previous query right here, it can be a little hard to see, you know, some of these nested queries. And in many situations, you might have like nested queries within nested queries, which become very difficult to manage. And if we wanted to convert this into using common table expressions, because it creates a logical component that's easier to understand, we can do that. So I would just take this chunk of code over here and then we call it daily orders. So it's essentially taking that same chunk of code and let's just call it daily order. So it's a nice little logical partition there. And then we can treat this as if we treated any other table where we take daily orders, which is over here, and then we just write the query as we did before. So in my mind, this is a lot easier to read than something like this, especially when the conditions get, get a little more tricky as they would in, in the future, right? Okay, cool. Now let's go on to an advanced concept, which is windowing functions. So let's say that we have this particular question right now. What are the top three most expensive orders every single day? So every day I just wanna get the top three orders in terms of pricing, right? How do we do that? A little hint here is that you can break the problem down into three steps where first you would get like the total price of all orders every single day. And then you would start to rank those prices and then you would only filter for the top three. So. We're gonna walk through the step-by-step -step situation, but after you take some time to think about it. All right, hope we're done here. So let's now talk about this problem. First of all is get the total price of all orders every day, which is kind of what we have done. But in this case, like for every single order, we are going to, in every single order on every single date, we are going to determine the total price. So we're using an aggregation right here and we're grouping by, of course, like the first two, two columns here. So what this will lead to is, well, you have the date with an order number and the total price of all items in that order. Now what you want to do is rank those orders from most expensive to least expensive. And essentially you can do that with, well, the, this is like the main thing that we're adding here. It's it, it's this is a window this is a window aggregation function where basically we can just start ordering we can order these uh, rows or results just in any way we want. So in this case, I'm partitioning by date. So for every single date, I am going to be creating an ordered list where the total price where the high where the higher price is on top and the lower one is on bottom. And that's kind of exactly what we're doing here. If we just look here. 
So it's kind of sorted with the rankings in just that order and it restarts for the second date, right? So cool, we got a ranking going on now for every order every day and now we just need to filter for the top three. And that's exactly what we do in this third chunk where we're just saying where ranking is less than or equal to three and everything else kind of remains the same. And so you'll get a list that kind of looks like this where every single date will have three records and the record will correspond to the most expensive food items on, I mean, most expensive orders um, on that day, the top three at least. And so I hope this kind of helps you understand like intuitively now we've, we've built like how joins, aggregations, case statements, and windowing functions can all come together to make reasonably complex queries with pretty cool decisions. Now we're going to jump into a couple of applications of like how this could be used in machine learning. So specifically, like I have two previous videos. One of them is on time series forecasting as a regression problem, and then also fraud detection as a classification problem. And we can look at like how SQL works with both of them. So this time series forecasting is actually a part of a previous video that I kind of, um, I made a video on. So if you want to check that out and you're interested in time series forecasting, be sure to check it out. Um, in this case, I, I have like, uh, I created the same kind of time series data set because it's, it is using the same data set. So I created the same time series forecasting over here, but I wanted to model this as a regression problem. And this is the kind of rows, this is kind of what I wanted here. So I created two features, which is like, what are the total orders that happened the last week as well as the last month and tried to determine the total number of orders that will happen in the next week. Right. And for that, I created this data set. So you have features, you have labels, and it's created in a data set called queries slash, well, query slash base.sql. So we can actually go to that. And when we do, you'll see all of the concepts that we just talked about are kind of embedded in here. So we have CTEs over here. We have a CTE to get distinct orders, then total number of orders every week. We have that. Now this, by the way, is a strange, all of this is kind of like a strange query. You could say accent or dialect, which is known as SQLite. Um, there are many different variations of SQL that you could try, you know, programming this stuff in. For example, it could be MySQL, Postgres, um, SQLite, Snowflake, there's a ton out there. Just choose one, whatever you're comfortable with, and just roll with that. Um, right now, here is to get like the first feature for seven days, recent orders in the last 30 days, and then I'm getting um, total number of orders in the next coming week, right? And I'm using a bunch of joins over here to uh, accommodate for all of them and just join them together and create the data set that I showed you before. So essentially, we're just using all of the same fundamental concepts that I just showed you right now in order to you know, use this for machine learning. So very useful at work. And it's actually not much that you would need to know. Now, the next one is fraud detection for classification problems. So let's just go through that real quick right now. So in this case, let's go fighting fraud at I, Pi, and B. And in this case, I modeled fraud as a classification problem where we have essentially a label, which would be like, hey, does this, is this a fraudulent transaction? Zero or one, it's a binary label. And then we have a slew of like all these, all these uh, features that we're using and putting into our model, right? Now, how did we create this? Well, let's go to the query slash base dot SQL file as as we always do let's go here and voila we have a very similar format that we saw in the time series pro the time series um query as well where we first start with well just getting the basic stuff for the transaction that we need then this is a cte for just getting past orders um this is just the same thing for like looking at the past how many fraudulent orders were made in the past by this particular user and then we do the same thing for merchants i'm creating two ctes for past merchant sales and past um merchant sales that happen to be fraudulent and then we just join all those ctes together in this way right and essentially we're using the exact same concepts including here we're also using case wins 
But I guess what's extra here is this cast and coalesce. So casting is used to basically turn, um, you know, from one data type to another. In this case, I wanted to make sure that the location, the category, all of these fields are strings or var variable character sequences. And then coalesce, it's, a, it's a, fun, a fun little function that says, hey, if this thing is null, like number of past transaction is null, then that means by default set it to true, right? So overall, my entire point of like even showing this right now was that we could use the fundamental SQL ideas that I just talked about in the beginning of this video for even more complex, you know, creating machine learning data sets for training altogether. And that's pretty much all the SQL you'll, this is a good amount of the SQL that you'll really need. Now, I have gone into detail for both the time series and the fraud detection in separate videos that I encourage you to really check out if you wanna know more about uh, these queries. I've explained it in detail. Also, I'm planning to see if I could make a course that's more application oriented where we'll even do a deep dive in uh, certain questions and try to tackle SQL from a very, very practical standpoint. If you're interested in that, do let me know in the comments down below. And that's all I have for now. So please do join, please do first like this video. Please subscribe if you like content like this. We also have a Discord server going on, like I mentioned before. So I would love for you to join them. Let's have some happy discussions over there. And that's all I have for you now. So thank you all so much. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.